Number 10, Alcatraz. It's the 1930s and organized crime and gangsters have ruled over the city streets of America for at least a decade. At first the crooks and wealthy gangsters were idolized for their lavish lifestyles and sticking it to the man attitude. Literally. A lot of these criminals are too wealthy and powerful to be caught and all the smaller ones, well they organize jailbreaks. A surprising amount to be honest. Well what if there was a place that was so inescapable, so dangerous, even for the most dangerous and lucrative criminal? Well, that's what Alcatraz was. A place for the most rotten, no good criminals. And it was an example to others out there that Uncle Sam wasn't fooling around. Hence why Al Capone was sent there. And in case you were wondering, it wasn't a five star hotel. Surrounded by rough waters in San Francisco Bay, it was a fortress and a maximum security prison. Number 9, The Pillory. As an actor, my greatest fear would be an audience that's turned on me. And they've reached for their summer fresh ripe tomatoes and have launched them onto stage left where I am reciting Shakespeare monologues quite poorly. Maybe that was just a fever dream, but what isn't a fever dream is humiliating someone in a pillory. Used back in ye olde times as a form of humiliation punishment, a means of exposing one to ridicule and embarrassment. Mind you, the design itself leaves you fairly vulnerable as both your head and arms are locked up in a not very comforting position. So look like this, it's not good, you don't like that. This is where the town can ridicule you. Name calling, spitting, slapping, and the aforementioned tomato toss. No thank you, I don't even like tomatoes. Not a big fan of tomatoes. Number 8. Tamashigiri, feudal Japan, a land of isolation, haikus, and cherry blossom trees in the divine wind. Speaking of divine wind, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, to be there and witness the art and majesty of the time. For me, and I'm sure a lot of others at home, the coolest part about feudal Japan is samurais, the knights for hire who became so powerful they basically became their own government. Pretty cool. While the samurai used a handful of different blades and tactics, none is more famous than the katana. Curved swords forged with great care and patience. The end result is a blade that's not only tough as steel, but could cut through just about any soft target. So after a blade was completed, it needed to be tested. Makes sense. The art of Tamashigiri is taking criminals, crooks, and sadly, oftentimes innocent folks, and seeing how well a katana could lob off a limb. If it works, you have yourself a blade worthy of a Jedi. If not, well, back to the drawing board. No blood loss here. Well, actually a lot. Number 7. The Rack On to something not so hot and fast, but rather dull and slow, the Rack is surprisingly well known. It was originally introduced to the Tower of London around 1420. The Duke of Exeter referred to this device as his daughter. What a weirdo. It's like guys who call their car like she. It's like, okay, just a little bit too close to your automobile, man. Relax. It was an open bed frame type device where your ankles were tied at the bottom and your hands were tied at the top. Already we're off to a horrible start. It was horizontal as well and sometimes it was up. It was, it was all bad. It would just leave you hanging by these ropes and these ropes were slowly tightened more and more, obviously causing some problems to muscles and joints that were, you know, holding things in place. This was done to extract information. This is also one of the worst things I've heard. Even getting tickled like this would be horrible. I couldn't even imagine. I make jokes because I'm uncomfortable. Honestly, hit that thumbs up to spread some good vibes because we're not even halfway done, folks. Number six, molten metal. This was another form of capital punishment, and if you've seen Game of Thrones, it'll ring a familiar bell. A few of these do, actually. Yikes. Metal would be heated up in a cauldron for a long, long time to the point where it was liquid, it was molten metal, just a soup of minerals. Look, we said this video wasn't for the faint-hearted, and here at Bumblebee, we like to keep that promise. They would then pour the molten metal on your head, or more commonly known, this would they pour it down the throat of the accused. Obviously, it wasn't done as a method to extract information, it was done to brutally end someone's life. Because they're not talking after that, of course. Execution by molten metal was supposedly done to a wealthy Roman general, Marcus Licinius Crassus, back in ancient times. The metal would burn your muscles and skin, literally cooking it, and then after a few moments, it would harden. Bad, bad, not good. Number five. Keel hauling. Not to be confused with Kegels, keel hauling was reserved for the worst of the worst at sea. This was used by pirates for sailors who disobeyed orders and all that jazz. The victim would be suspended by a rope with rocks or weights around their ankles, then they're lowered to the keel of the ship where all the sharp barnacles live. After so long, these ships are so old, it's just piled on layers and layers of barnacles. Then they would get dragged all along them with the water and 
everything. Water plus pain, it's a lot, it's a deadly combination. Anything to do with barnacles in the sea, no chance. I'll literally tell you anything, Blackbeard. Anything. Number four, solitary confinement. This is a kind of punishment that still exists in our modern society, but it can truly be one of the worst punishments out there because of the type of psychological distress that it causes. We were all just in a pandemic for so long. We got so bored and we had Netflix and iPads and I whatevers. I can't even imagine this back in the day. Basically, it's a prisoner living in a single cell with little to no contact with anybody else. Not even like a guard or anything rattling keys like in the old times. It was just nothing. No one would even check on them. There are many stories about people being locked up for so long they forget about their families. And some people have gone away to solitary confinement for so long that once they're out, they just forget how to speak, really. They forget how to be a human and interact in the real world. Solitary confinement and the negative effects that it has on a person is becoming a wider topic of conversation because of the effects on a person's mental well-being, and it's a topic for a lot of human rights organizations. Back in medieval times, solitary confinement was literally just a room made of stones. It was pitch black, freezing cold, you were tucked away below some janky castle, and most of the time, you weren't really alone. In the dark, nibbling away your little piggies were. Number three, hip hop and Bach. There's really nothing worse than a neighbor who's too loud, especially for their own good. You can go house searching in this market, look all over and finally find the right place. Ooh, too bad your neighbor's a metalhead and doesn't care about the bylaws. Uh oh. Listen, I can jam to Metallica all day, but it is best to respect those around you. It's just the way I feel. Well, Andrew Vactor was that neighbor, and after finding himself in court, he was facing a $150 fine. Or he had the option to listen to classical music for 20 hours and pay only $35. He got about 15 minutes into Bach before he got up and decided to pay the $150 fine. He said he was late to band practice, but in actuality, it was more of he didn't want to listen to the music, which he was doing because he was loud and making people listen to music that they didn't want to listen to. It's, hmm, how the tables have turned. Number two, Ash Tower. This one's from ancient Persia. So basically, you get a large wooden tower, say about uh, three stories. And on the inside, you get yourself a nice fire going. Nice, nice big fire going. You let it burn for a couple of days to create a nice pile of ash. Now, you just need a perpetrator to toss in there. As if that weren't enough, the tower has a wheel and a pole in the center that allows an operator on the outside to stir you up like a cake batter from hell. Thus, your punishment would be to spend time in a swirling dust storm of hot fire, ash, and horribleness. God, that sounds awful. Oof, no thanks. And number one, milk and honey. This one's just so, ah, just so diabolical. I can't even. Even James Bond villains are saying, Lost a bit much, isn't it? And the chief? Well, you, you know what the chief said. He, he said that's not it. A very unique punishment from, again, ancient Persia. It goes as follows. You take your perpetrator and you tie him down to a boat so both arms and legs are bound, something like that. Then you come by every day to a boat that's hovering near the shore and force feed the crook milk and honey until they cannot take it anymore. It often leads to a boat full of refunded lunch, human waste, or even sometimes a crocodile might come by for some free lunch brought to you by the judicial system of ancient Persia. Ooh, no thank you, no thanks. Kicking off the list at number 10, boiling. Whenever I get in a bath that's too hot, I think of the medieval times. I can't help it. I can't believe this was once a real thing. I get chills thinking about it. Either water or oil would be used for this ancient punishment. To die by being boiled, that was reserved for those who poisoned others. So if you have any vials of poison, toss it. Don't do it, man. Trust me. In 1531, the time King Henry VIII was running the show, they made boiling a capital punishment. So poisoning somebody back then was equal to treason. Therefore, it was agreed you should be boiled slowly in front of like a room full of people. I would say that's the worst, but I know what's also to come on this list. Number nine, water. Taking a step away from the worst physical thing one could possibly go through, let's take a look at how far the mind will go before it too breaks. Sensory deprivation is still around today. In fact, there's many who pay for it. Yeah, they lie in a dark tub full of salt, then they float and listen to Childish Gambino. It's a magical experience. Your senses are powerful, especially combined with water. So this dripping machine, this old water punishment, that was just all bad. You had ice cold water dripping on your forehead and your face over and over for hours and hours. Drops would be at different random times so you can predict it as well. My toes are wiggling while I'm talking about this. This is making me anxious right now. In medieval times, they would tie you down and then using a horn, a big ass funnel, they would pour nine pints of water down into your, down your, down your throat. So water is horrible in many ways. Number eight, fire. 
Can't talk about medieval punishments without mentioning this witchy classic. Commonly practiced in Babylonia and ancient Israel, then later on in Europe with the classic witch hunts, burning at the stake didn't come from churches, like many believe. They didn't call the shots there at all. That was mainly how small towns settled local beef. Yeah, by burning at the stake, instead of just like a fist fight at the park. Burning at the stake came in full swing way back in 1431 in France. French disbelievers like Joan of Arc, they were burned at the stake. It was crazy that they actually did this as a form of punishment. This is one of the worst medieval punishments. And believe me, there's a little bit of a silver lining here. It was quicker than most. Sometimes. Gunpowder was sometimes used so that the burning and stuff would be much faster and brighter and louder and much more horrible. A lot worse on paper, but a lot faster. So honestly, I think it's better. History is insane. Another red hot punishment used in medieval times was when the accused had to hold a red hot iron bar and then walk a few steps with it. A red hot iron bar, your hands were literally toast at that point. Here's where it gets even worse though. Three days later, the accused would come back to the court and then when the bandages were removed, if their hands were healing, they started to heal, they were deemed innocent. They were on the path to goodness and whatever. If their hands were still in horrible condition from say, I don't know, holding a red hot iron bar, then they were pronounced guilty. That's how the courts worked back then. Number seven, Michael Cincinnati the third. Part three on this guy, this guy's crazy. Last time I talked about Judge Cincinnati on this list, but I, I, I think this is the best one actually. This is pretty, pretty crazy. Look, sometimes youths get themselves into trouble for a whole slew of reasons. I'm sure even you guys at home agree that, you know, we all make mistakes when we're young. Everyone has. Well, this one's about someone who is all grown up now. A woman who skipped out on a cab fare. <gasps> oh, she needed the money for a new pair of shoes because when she was brought to Cincinnati's court, her sentence was to walk 30 miles in 48 hours. Yikes. For Canadian fans out there, that's like walking from Toronto to Newmarket. Oh, no thank you. Yeah, I know, right? That's the worst. But to be fair, she did ride and dash, so always pay your due, folks. I don't know. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be walking. You'll be doing the Terry Fox run, buddy. You're out. That'd be the worst one for me, dude. Are you kidding me? It's like, listen, we know you're going to walk. No! Number six, tough love. It's Friday night. The glow of two PC monitors illuminates your face. An ice cold monster energy drink has just hit your empty stomach. Good thing you can order chicken mac nuggets right at your house. Living in your mom's basement is great. Except when other gamers call you out for being a sweat and you really have no comeback because you are living in your mom's basement. So it's, it's kind of tough. Yes, the life of millennial mid 20s who didn't move out of their parents houses. Oh, oh, mom, I can't pause the game right now. It's an online match. God. Well, how about this case from Andalusia, Spain, where a 25 year old man was taking his parents to court because they cut off his allowance. Yeah, question, who's still getting allowance at 25? I'm, I'm 25, someone give me allowance? I like allowance, give me allowance. Oh, uh, worst. Well, seeing as this was completely ludicrous, the judge not only sided with the parents, but actually forced him on court order to move out of their parents' house and get a job. You thought it was gonna go your way, but uh, now, now who's the clown? A sweaty guy in the basement. Number five, penalty of the sack. Man, this one is just so brutal. Here's one from ancient Rome, because we gotta mix it up a little bit. Some modern, some from the past. Here we we go. I would not wish this upon my worst enemy. So once found of a worse enough crime to deserve this, you would be placed in a large leather sack. But because Romans are super nice and don't want you to be lonely, they give you some pets to keep you company. Also placed in the sack with you is a chicken, a dog, a monkey, and a snake. <laughs> that sounds like quite the party. You might get a little thirsty in there having so much fun. So then the animal squad entourage and you is thrown into a body of fast moving water just to cool off. <laughs> How nice. All jokes aside, this is a horrible and brutal method that has several animal agencies looking for a time machine just to talk to the Romans and ask them, hey man, not cool, you know? That's crazy. I, I can't even imagine that. Have you ever been white water rafting before? That's uh, that plus a monkey and a snake. Oh, I don't like that. Number four, Xmas Slammer Blues. Nobody wants their Christmas to get ruined. Even the people that say they hate Christmas. How can you say no to a gift? I know I can, I love gifts. Well, Bettina Young, a woman from Ohio, knows what it's like to have her Christmas ruined. Young had been involved in a driver's license scandal, which given some drivers on the road today, makes a lot of sense where they got their license from. I don't know, hmm. Well, her sentence was uh, very unusual to say the least. She was to spend five Christmases in jail. No, not five literal years as Christmases. What they actually mean is she was to spend five Christmases 
in jail. Meaning, all the other days of the year, she would be free on probation, of course. But come Christmas time, she wouldn't be cutting turkey. She would be in jail away from her family, thinking about what she has done. That's kind of weird, though. It's like, hey guys, I'll see you. I'll see you after Christmas. I gotta go. Where are you going? I'm going to jail. I'm just gonna spend a weekend in jail. You know, I'm just gonna spend a weekend in jail. No big deal. Number three, Vlad again? What? Yes, Vlad the Impaler again, and for an equally horrific sentence. Oh boy, here we go. There's a tale of two religious envoys making their way to Vlad's castle, past all the people on spikes and pikes and whatnot. Ooh, gross. Which he and the castle were inspirations for Dracula, remember, which is kind of cool. Makes sense. And when these Gentiles got there and met Vlad, the first thing they were asked to do was remove their hats. Now, the kind depends on what version of the story is being told, but regardless, the religious men refused to remove their hats. So Vlad had his henchmen nail the hats into their skulls so that they may never remove them ever again. Oh my god, that is horrible. <laughs> That's so bad. That's so bad. Number two, Molten Metal. This one is straight out of Mortal Kombat. A traditional sentence that comes from the Middle East, Israel, and the Ottoman Empire. Basically, if you take your perp and you restrain him so he cannot move from what Jigsaw as trap he's about to be unleashed upon. During this, the local blacksmith has been melting down some metals until they are in liquid form. Remember, there's three forms of matter, liquid gas and solids, remember that, and sometimes plasma, depends who you ask. Then, right from the crucible, the liquid hot magma is poured in the mouth of the crook. I will let you imagine how much pain and screaming it caused. It was a lot. Number one, flaying. Did I say the last one was from Mortal Kombat? No, now see this one, this one is one of Scorpion's best, I promise. A perpetrator is put on a table where, alive, this is done, and it's, oh god, I get lightheaded just thinking about it. The crook is slowly and precisely skinned like a big game hunt, and then they're left like a big red meaty surprise, kind of like the Titans look like an attack on Titan. It's awful, don't do it. And we're better than that now. Number 10, Robert Rostango. This is a weird one. When I got to high school, cell phones and meme culture were already a mainstay in our culture. It wasn't its infancy, but it was there. I was the first generation to have teachers tell us to put our phones away. By the time I got to senior year, smartphones were pretty much, well, like they are today. And there was a class full of rowdy teenagers more interested in planking than, uh, what our anthro teacher had to say. Wasn't a fan of my anthro teacher, she wasn't very nice. Constant buzzing, ringing, and popular girls walking in late to class with a bench handbag twice the size of our desks. Ah, <sighs> good times. Teachers need a raise. Well, Judge Robert Rostango in 2005 was already fed up with cell phones. And that's even way before we were arguing over if the dress was black and blue or white and gold. Remember that? I do. Judge Rostango was so fed up with phones in his court that he told everybody, if it goes off again and no one claims it, if it's not theirs, if it's yours, you're all going to jail. You're all gonna be thrown in jail for contempt of court. After a cell phone did ring, he did not, uh, didn't, he wasn't bluffing as he threw everybody in jail for contempt of court. Mind you, they only stayed a couple hours and they were eventually released, the charges were dropped, and uh, a few years later he was fired. So yeah, we, kind of a weird story, but wow, that's, keep your cell phones off, you know, that's, you, go to, you go to jail. Number nine, Michael Cincinnati, the first. This guy's pretty interesting, a judge from Ohio with creative Creative punishments. For the first case of his creative punishment, it involved a local high school student who was fed up with something. What? I'm not sure, but it was probably a legit reason. Well, with his edgelord rage, he mowed an offensive abbreviation in the high school lawn. Kind of a weird thing to do. I don't know why you'd mow something offensive in the lawn like, oh, I hate the, the system, I'm gonna mow their lawn. So when the crook was caught and brought before Judge Cincinnati, well, the young mischief maker wasn't ready. Instead of jail time or juvenile hall, he had the option instead of going there, to mow the entire lawn of the high school with a manual push mower. It doesn't sound that bad, but if you've ever actually used a manual push mower before, then you know how labor intensive that could be. Lessons learned, I hope. It's, they're not fun. After like a couple, like after a day of using it, you gotta take the blades off, sharpen them, you gotta oil, Ah, oh, it's no good, no good. Number eight, Michael Cincinnati, the second part. Here we go, this guy's got a couple under his belt. It's pretty cool. Another youth in trouble of being sucked into the justice system of America. And there's Judge Cincinnati to save the day. In another case, a troubled youth had spray painted graffiti where graffiti shan't be. Truth be told, I think graffiti adds color to the city, especially downtown alleys. I mean, how am I supposed to know whose turf I'm on? 
Not that I could read it anyway. However, the youth was facing up to 10 days in jail, but instead, Judge Cincinnati offered that the criminal Rembrandt use his talents for good. Mm. He was to paint an old beat up handrail black. Except he had to do it with a toothbrush instead of a paintbrush. Now, given my paint background, I'd say he got off pretty easily. The worst part would have been the fumes from the paint, but then again, even some folks enjoy that too, so I, I don't know. It wouldn't be that bad. You actually get a lot done. It's still a brush. It might be a small brush, but you still get a lot done. Number seven, electric chair. Ever seen the Green Mile? Yeah, I have a fear of electricity and sponges now too. The electric chair was a popular sentence in the early to mid 20th century for the truly awful and interesting members of our society. But after years of controversial use and horror, we no longer use it. Oh wait, just kidding, it's actually still used today. Now, I'm not here to make a statement on capital punishment, but imagine being in court and the judge looks at you and says, hey, you know what? You look like you could use 2,000 volts at around 12 amps running through your body. Which, for all DIY electricians at home, is enough to make your self-wiring project your last. So, stay out of court. Number six, Vlad the Impaler. You gotta love Vlad. Here you got a king and leader of a small European kingdom that is constantly being targeted by members of the previous dynasty who want him gone, and foreign invaders frothing at the mouth to take over his kingdom. Vlad, however, wasn't going to take any of this laying down. Vlad amassed his army and did his best to defend his kingdom. However, it's his horrible scare tactics that have him on this list. As anyone he caught that was thought to be an enemy of the state was impaled on a large wooden stake through the hindquarters. Ouch. And like the worst Christmas decoration ever, he left those poor saps on display for any who question his authority. There should be a field full of people on spikes. That's. Oof. No thanks. Number five, the National Razor. Once the National Razor had been busted out to get rid of King Louis and Marie Antoinette, well, it simply couldn't be put away. Like an ocarina song that you can't remember. That menu stays open for a while. And remember the songs. Now, when an autocratic leadership like the French monarch was collapses, it creates a power vacuum. Plus, the country was starving and about to go to war, so they were trying times to say the least. So how do we quell the royalist movement and keep the revolution alive, said Robespierre. I know, let's bring out the National Razor on overdrive. Ooh, good idea. During a short time period, thousands of people met their end to the guillotine for anti-revolution behavior. Right up until Robespierre also met his end the same way for anti-revolution behavior. But at that time, anything could be anti-revolution behavior, so a lot of people <laughs> off of the head. Number four, the brazen bull. It's ancient Greece, and you're tired of the same old punishments and sentencing. Ugh, so bored of everything. That's when someone rolls in the brazen bull, or more like carries it in, because I, I, I doubt it had wheels. At first, you see a life-size bull sculpture made out of bronze. Not that impressive, you think, until someone opens the hidden door. What's this, you say, in visible confusion? That's when an ancient Greek version of a cheesy used car salesman slaps that bad boy on top twice. Bonk, bonk. The hollow metallic sound puts you at ease. You're already reaching for your drachma. Now, what's the point of this bull? Well, simply put a perpetrator inside, light a fire underneath, and cook him. And there's your sentence. Brand new. It's lovely. You're going to love it. It's great. I can't speak. That's what it is. Number three. Rats, another Game of Thrones classic. If you're a rat person, I know there's a lot of people who do tricks with their pet rat. That's cool, but maybe cover Stuart Little's eyes for this one. Rats as a medieval punishment, where do I even start? Okay, this one was a punishment for the rats at the same time. What was once called a rat trap involved a man or woman being tied down to something and then a metal enclosure would be strapped down to their chest or their stomach. Now inside this metal enclosure, there's rats, which are also just loose walking around and the person can feel them, the little feet walking around in their skin. And this is when the person instilling the punishment begins heating the other end of the metal enclosure Historically, it was hot coals that were usually placed on top or there's a fire underneath, which quickly creates a hot environment for the rats inside. From there, the rats begin frantically searching for a way out, but because it's made of metal and they can't bite through that, they find your skin and then that they can obviously bite through. So you can paint the picture in your head. It's disgusting. Number two, the breaking wheel. The breaking wheel is literally just a large disc, a pirate ship wheel almost just lying there where somebody is then tied to it and everybody else just hammers them and beats the shit out of them over and over. But of course, since we're talking about medieval times, everything has to be a show and whatnot. So once the accused was beaten and then presumed dead, the wheel would lift up and turn just to show everybody what's up. 
Another way to use the braking wheel, yep, there was more than one, again, creative folks back then, they would tie a person to the wheel and then continue to rotate it and then all the ropes below would get tighter and tighter and twist. Kind of like the rack, but with a literal twist. And finally coming in at number one, the brazen bull. This one takes the rat's problem and then makes it a you problem. Out of all the ones on this list, the brazen bull is the last one that I would do straight up haunting. It's also been referred to as a Sicilian bull and basically it's not too complex. There is a bronze sculpture often in the shape of, you guessed it, a bull. But in medieval times, it was just a big closed cauldron and usually it was large enough to fit a person inside. Yeah, this was in a Saw movie too, I believe. That's how you know it's a good one when it's in the movie Saw. So once the person was locked inside or it was leaned over so they couldn't get out, a fire would then be set underneath this bull and then you can probably figure out the rest in your head. They would even engineer the bull so that when somebody screamed, it sounded like a bull's roar. How fun is that? How fun is history? I'm learning so much about history that's fun on Bumblebee. Yeah.